Hello and welcome. My name is Iris Pinkovic and I'm the CEO of Inocan Pharma. I want to introduce you to our scientific work and today we have Professor Chesi Bernholz of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. As the head of the laboratory of membrane and liposome research, I'm heading a group of 12 scientists. Uh, we develop a kind of liposomes, in a way special liposomes, and these are a really encapsulate very large amount of CBD and release it very slowly. The, the main component are the liposome, but in all, as we're dealing with local injection, we prefer to embed the liposome in hydrogels uh, for, diff for various reasons. One of them prevent different unwanted cells to reach the liposome at the site of the injection. And the hydrogel in this case is a kind of a barrier. Uh, so we have what we call the two-stage system, where the first stage is the liposome which encapsulates the drug, the CBD in this case. And the second stage is the hydrogel. We have to understand that issues about use of CBD today as a drug. First of all, if you inject CBD, there is a first pass, namely the, most of the CBD will be go to the liver and will be degraded there. So availability will be very small. If you give it by uh, in oral, orally, again, it will go to the blood and very fast will be degraded. Big part of it will not really reach the blood at all. So again, there is a major availability uh, uh, method approach. What we're trying to do is really to overcome these barriers by actually local injection that enable slow and controlled release to the level we want. We already achieved one injection will be sufficient for once in three weeks, and I believe we can improve it even further. Once a month is a kind of a, a very good uh, starting point. And by this, lo local injections are very easy to give. People sometimes even do it, do it to, to themselves, like we know in the case of insulin and, and other drugs. If we succeed in it in humans, like we did show in animals, different kind of animals, then I think we know already that the level that we reach in the blood is good enough to get biological activity. So we'll have a very powerful uh, formulation. CBD can apply for many, many applications. For example, uh, diseases that involve pain, like osteoarthritis, for example, or rheumatoid arthritis, and, and many others. Then you have diseases that involve inflammation, uh, or autoimmune disease, like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis that I mentioned before. And then there is another group, like epilepsy, which the drug was already approved for use for a limited group of people, for kids mainly. The scope will be increased, and actually could be applied to larger population of epilepsy patients, which I think is a, is a major disease. The toxicity of this drug is, is very low. It has many advantages over other drugs which have a well-known therapeutic efficacy with relatively low uh, toxicity. The therapeutic index of the drug we have developed will be high, and this is a huge, huge advantage. I believe that the first indication should be easy to accomplish, even not having a very large market to start with, but once we get approval, it's like putting the, the leg in the door and opening it for many other indications and applications, and it will be easier once you get approval for uh, indication number one. IP in general is a very tricky business. First of all, it becomes more and more difficult to get patent on liposomal product. You want to get it as a strong patent and not very weak patent. So when we kind of decide to apply, we do a very elaborate uh, checking to make sure that we have a patentability, namely that there is nothing else in the field. 
that will, uh, other patents that are on the way. And the second thing, not less important, is what we call freedom of operate. Namely, that there is no one that claims something similar to us that without getting his permission or paying them some royalties, we can, uh, we can uh, go and sell the drug. You know, we applied for uh, now two uh, PCTs, two patents on different products we have. And let's hope and see how it will go. But based on the searches, it seemed that we succeeded to, to find a niche that is uh, not kind of a clash with existing stuff. What we try to do is to figure out what's the best time to apply for a patent, not try to do it too early, and of course, since it's risky, not to do it too late either. So that's, that's why I said patents are very, very tricky. The story of Doxil is, is really interesting. And, and it started with a small company called Liposome Technology Incorporated that, that licensed the technology from the Hebrew University, mm -hmm. from the TTO of the Hebrew University. And uh, it took us seven and a half years to develop Doxil. And then we have left for 14.5 years for sales and so the company make a lot, a lot of money. Mid-sized company by the name of Alza bought, uh, bought liposome technology for $700 million. And then this become very attractive for J&J. So they bought Alza for $7 billion. So it started from a small company. In a, in a way, it's parallel to what will be with Inokan, a small company maybe go directly to large company, maybe through inter intermediate company, because it's very, very difficult for a small company to go, let's say, to something like phase three clinical trial. We required many uh, clinical sites all over the globe to get really broader, uh, broader uh, approval. Use it for Europe, use it for US, maybe use it for China and India and so on. So it's, it, we, really a kind of such a drug that have many, many patients may use, much more than in Doxil, you really will need something very strong with a lot of distribution capability and a lot of uh, understanding of the regulatory agency in many, many places. The, the attractive things about CBD is almost lack of toxicity. That's a huge, huge advantage. And this will make the life much easier. I think now we had, we had bust pretty fast because in the beginning we have to develop the formulations and this take a lot of time. Now we have the formulations. We still have to deal with some aspect, how to uh, uh, make mass production. It's still uh, a kind of a major, uh, a major project. But overall we have a formulation. We have actually look like we have two very different formulations that can serve a little bit different indications, which make us quite versatile in this case. And, and, uh, but still, clinical trial will depend a lot on what indication we take. If there are indications that the clinical trial will take a year, this is a big mission. If we select indication that the clinical trial one month is enough, we can do, we can go move much faster. So there are a lot of decisions that still have to be made, evaluate what is the best indication to start with. I started working with Inokan, I think about three and a half or four years ago. I, I work with many, many companies and Inokan is one of the best in terms of kind of communication, in terms of understanding what they want, understanding what they have, and, and uh, interaction with us. Uh, they know how to put pressure when it's required. And they are really open-minded. When we come with a new idea, they're always willing to test it. Uh, and, and, and this gives us a lot of leverage, and also them. The interaction between Inokan and, and my lab and me is very good. It enables to support the success 
much better than in many other company that I dealt with and developed drugs. Because of this, the chance of bringing the drug to the market is good. And they understand the, the job very well, which is critical. Thank you very much for listening.